Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's Wednesday, and I thought we'd do some cooking. Um, da, da, da. Right now is when the intro would start, music's playing, fanfare, applause, blah, blah, blah. But I don't have an intro, so we're going to skip all that. Tonight, <laughs> we're going to make a burrito pie. Even though it's not really going to be pie shaped, because uh, we're going to put it in a 9x13 pan. It's the biggest one I got. The original recipe calls for a four quart pan. That's the only thing I got that's close to four quarts. So that's how we're going to run it. All right. Uh, burrito pie. Never made it before, but it's pretty straightforward. It seems kind of easy. I think in all reality, this would be a good weeknight meal. When you get home, it doesn't seem like it's going to take long to prep. It only takes 20 to 30 minutes in the oven. And that's just to get everything to blend together and the cheese to melt that's in it. So uh, I wrote it all down. Handy dandy notebook. If we like the recipe, it'll be transferred to a card. Uh, one of those neon pink, green, or yellow cards I have. Uh, so the, the list you need is two pounds of hamburger. Now, for to save time so we don't have to cook up the hamburger, I already have hamburger done up because we can our hamburger. Uh, one chopped onion. Uh, it didn't specify, specify, specifies what's specify what size, so I did a medium onion. And you want to chop it up uh, or dice it. You know, you want smaller pieces at any rate. I, but do whatever size you like. That's up to you and yours. Um, it just says chopped. Two teaspoons of minced garlic. Um, I have not minced it yet. I will use the press and hit our minced garlic up. And then here's where it gets really easy because everything else is in a can. Uh, you'll have to excuse the fire truck going by if you just heard that. You need one... Uh, three ounce can of black olives. This happens to be three and a half ounces because um, that's all they sell, uh, which is okay. I mean, if you don't like olives, then you can admit that out even if you don't like it. Uh, the next thing you need is one small can of green chilies. Uh, this is actually a double can, but we like green chilies and we can't seem to find the four ounce cans in our store still. Uh, Ever since the pandemic happened, at least in Newark, we've been really limited on what we can buy size-wise. They don't quite carry everything they used to yet. Next thing you need is one 10-ounce can of Rotel. Um, unless you like Rotel, you can get the bigger 12-ounce can. <clears throat> one 16-ounce jar of taco sauce. Now, we don't own taco sauce. We just make our own when we need it, so it's currently in this tomato sauce can. Um, but a 16 ounce jar is the equivalent of one can. And I just made my own. It's really easy. If you want the recipe for taco sauce, um, let me know. Uh, leave a message down in the comments. I can either do a video on it or get a hold of me on Facebook and they can just give you the recipe. It's got about nine or 10 different things in it, but it's really easy. And it's all, if you cook any Southwestern Mexican style dishes, you'll have all the ingredients. I guarantee it. You need a, Two cans of refried beans, any refried beans of your choice. Today I'm using uh, Rosarita's Traditional and Rosarita's Jal Spicy Jalapeno because uh, that's what I had available. But use any kind you like. Um, the next thing we're going to need is uh, not eight to nine ounces, a small block of this calls for Colby. I don't have Colby because we don't really eat Colby, but I'm using pepper jack. You can use any cheese you like. I mean, there's not a rule that says you can't. And the very last ingredient you need, I haven't got out yet because it takes two seconds. But I'll get it out now. You are going to need eight soft taco shells. Um, or you can use burrito shells or whatever. They, it, it, it says eight inch shells. So, and it just so happens we have eight inch shells here, um, then you're gonna need eight, uh, eight of them, 12 of them. Sorry, it got it. I'm telling you, I'm whacking. All right, so that's our ingredients list. It's, it's like I said, it's not a lot, most of it's in cans. It's just, you know, the only thing you have to prep work wise is hamburger and your onion and your garlic. Now, like I said, we pre can, we can our hamburger, um, when we want it loose like this for sloppy joes and stuff. So we already had that ready to go. So that just saved me like 15 minutes in itself. Garlic, you can buy minced in a small jar. That's not a bad option. That way you don't even have to press it. All you gotta do is just scoop out two tablespoons worth, 
So really, the only prep work I had to do was the onions. Everything else comes in a can or a jar. So let me get the camera moved and we'll move back, we'll move over to the stove so you can stare at my pan instead of my pretty face and we'll get started on uh, what we need to do with this. All right, I'll see you here in just one millisecond. All right, so I'm back. I got the uh, hamburger in the uh, pan already. So two pounds of hamburger and when you're getting your stuff together, your prep stuff together, go ahead and turn your on oven on to 350 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit 180 degrees Celsius, but you didn't think I'd know that. And your first step is you want to brown your hamburger. You want to brown it for about five minutes. I've already got that taken care of. So after you got your hamburger brown for five minutes, you're going to go ahead and put your onion in. And then we're going to mince our garlic up in our garlic press. Right quick, garlic press. Best tool ever created for somebody who doesn't like to mince garlic, um, which I don't. I, it has a tendency to be sticky on the hands when you're mincing. Uh, makes a mess on the counter. That's just my opinion. It could be just because I'm not that good at it. Um, but practice does make perfect, and I'm just, I guess, lazy. So we'll get that out of the way. Get our garlic in there. <laughs> And like I said, if you buy already pre-minced garlic, which they sell, I mean, they sell it in a jar. You can get it roasted, unroasted, you know, anything, you, it, almost any way you could think of with garlic. Um, you can even buy already peeled garlic, you know, all kinds of stuff to go like that. All right, so we brought our hamburger for five minutes for pretend because I'm already using pre-made, pre-done hamburger. You put your onion and your garlic in there. And we're going to let this go for about five more minutes, you know, and uh, let, let the onion, what we're trying to do is let the onion soften up, not necessarily burn, but soften up. And so I don't burn myself, put my handy dandy silicone handle on there. Get this taken care of. Canning hamburger. Um, I know that sounds weird. I, when me and Chris first heard about canning meat of any kind, we were like, whoa, that's kind of odd. Um, and But it's not, really. Uh, the taste of the hamburger does not change. Um, it tastes just like hamburger. Uh, and what it does is what we use it for. I mean, not only do we store it some for a rainy day. We've always got some down in the pantry downstairs. But... By having it on hand, you know, A, power goes out. We don't have to worry about cooking. Uh, I got a video on what to do when things like that happen and kind of being prepared uh, for, you know, you have to stay in your house or you can't get out or whatever. Uh, I got a video on that, but quick, easy weeknight meals. You know, Chris gets done working, you know, a long day. It's, I mean, I know she doesn't leave the house. She works from home. But she still works, and it, you know, it can take a toll on you mentally, a little bit physically. But the last thing she wants to do is think about, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. So if you can pre-make, you know, stuff and can it up, you got, you're halfway towards a, a good meal. I, I recently got a recipe for Rattel um, that I would like to try. I think that would be awesome. All right, well, I'm going to let this cook for a minute, and when uh, I come back, we'll add the rest of the ingredients. All right, see you here in a second. All right, work. All right guys, so we're back. <clears throat> I let everything steam down, and uh, or steam down. I let the onions cook down a little bit. They're soft. They're not brown and beat up. Hamburger's done by this point if you're using fresh hamburger. So the next step is literally just dump everything in here. So we're going to dump it all in. Green chilies, one can. We're going to do one can of black olives. One can of Rattel. Like that. Now, I did drain my Rattel off. I didn't want all that extra liquid in there. I am going to give this a good stir real quick. Doesn't that look amazingly colorful? Um, I, I think that's why, a part of the A, other than flavor, because we truly do love the taste of any Tex-Mex style uh, Mexican food. You know, 
it, we truly do like that. That's our favorite taste. Um, followed closely by any almost anything Asian. Um, and I've got a couple Asian dishes I'm going to do down the road. Uh, the problem I am having is getting some of the stuff I need for some of the dishes I want to try. Uh, so the next thing we need to put in there is our cans of uh, refried beans, which I need something to stab this with so I can get it out of there. Now, if you have the time and you like to, you know, I mean, we like refried beans from a can or something less desired by some. <clears throat> now, I do so like fresh right refried beans better. And if you have the time to make it, I would recommend doing that. Uh, I mean, ref canned refried beans aren't bad. Um, there are some brands that I like better than others. Uh, the Rosarita brand, they're good. They're not bad. Uh, now, I would recommend, if you ever make refried beans as a side dish, and I know you're going to tell me I am nuts, but add... Uh, some sour cream to it when you cook it down because the problem with canned refried beans is well I mean as you can see they're you know packed they're condensed they're you know not in the best of shape coming out of the can so when we make like refried beans for taco night I add uh, either some sour cream to it to loosen it up and make it look more like refried beans uh, there's a couple recipes for making homemade refried beans that involve sour cream. Uh, or, oddly enough, I know you're going to say I'm nuts, Duke's mayonnaise. Duke's mayonnaise is like the most versatile thing I've ever seen in my entire life. All right, so we got the refried beans in there. Get that off of there. Last thing we need to eat to, eat, to add is our taco sauce. And then we'll get this all good and mixed together. And might I highly recommend you try making your own taco sauce. Um, but it, I'm not a fan at all of store-bought taco sauce. But this recipe here is absolutely amazing. And I think I am going to do a video on how to uh, make your own seasonings. You know, because like we make our own chili, our own taco seasoning. We we make our own fajita seasoning. Um, we make our own ranch dressing uh, powder or ranch, you know, the ranch packets. We make our own. Um, we make our own taco sauce. The, you know, there's so many things you can do on your own. And a lot of that, especially if you follow my recipes, a lot of the stuff that goes in those, you'll already have. Um you know, and, and, and I don't buy anything special, you know, or out of the ordinary as far as seasoning goes, other than Red River Ranch, uh, which you can get through Kent Rollins. Um, I do cook a fair amount with that. So, but everything else, you know, your cumin, your Italian seasoning, your, you know, dill, all that stuff. I mean, that's all stuff you should probably have in your pantry as staples anyhow, um, if you do any kind of cooking. All right, so we got that all mixed up. I know, looks crazy, doesn't it? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit and melt together and, and blend all those spices together for about 15 minutes, if I remember right on the recipe. It says, as soon as I find the recipe, oh, there it is. I don't know how you people put up with me. Uh, we're going to let this sit and simmer, which, see, it's simmering, it's bubbling, um, for 15 minutes. And then when I come back, we'll uh, we'll we'll put our uh, our burrito pie together. It's more like a burrito lasagna, but it's called a burrito pie. So that is what we will continue to name it. All right, I'll see you here at a different camera camera angle in just a second. All right, guys. So we let that cook for about 15, 20 ish minutes. We let it simmer. Um, you don't want to bring it to a full boil. If you do, it'll pop all over the place and you'll have one heck of a mess. All right, so the rest of this is pretty easy. Once again, we preheated our oven at 350 degrees. So now all we have to do is layer this in like a lasagna. So we'll take a 
First thing you want to layer in is a layer of your meat mix, uh, per the instructions. Get that layered in, um, fairly even. You know, you don't want it to be too lumpy. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. It'll all even out in the bake. So me and Chris were talking while this was heating up and we, cause I was, I was trying to figure out why, yeah, you know, once you've cooked your hamburger and you've added all your stuff in, why exactly 15 minutes? Now, I mean, I can understand a few minutes uh, cause you want your, your, your stuff to blend together and yeah, but it's going to blend together in the oven. And the only other thing I can think of that makes sense is your refried beans need to cook down so they're loosened up. All right, so we got our layer of meat mix down, and then we want to go ahead and put in our first layer of shells. Now, I didn't put the shells in first. I mean, A, because that's what the, I'm following the instructions. But I'm going to be under the impression that we put the meat layer down first, so that way the tortilla shells don't stick to the bottom. All right, so we got our meat layer down. We put down four shells. We're going to add another layer of meat. Per the directions. And it doesn't, it doesn't say in the directions uh, how much meat to lay down in between each layer. Yeah, it just says layer it in. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to essentially do... Once you get past that first layer of meat, we're going to do burrito, meat, or tacos, soft shell, meat, and cheese. All the way to the top. And then we'll top it with some cheese. Yeah, now, I, looking at the amount of cheese we have, it calls for eight ounces of cheese. So, I mean, and it's, that's a fair amount. That's a half a pound. But I don't know if it's quite enough. So we'll do a layer of cheese I could be wrong I, I mean I'm gonna guess it's at least three layers because it calls for 12 soft shells and I'm putting four in at a time of course it also says just a four quart dish it doesn't say what kind of dish what size dish um, we were going to we had talked about doing this in a, a cast iron skillet but we wanted, I wanted to do it this way first. Um, so that way, because I know not all you guys have cast iron skillets. And that's, a, I mean, that's okay. It's not like a cast iron is a requirement. Although I recommend you own at least one or two. Um, and, and I've said this before, cast iron skillets, they last a lifetime. Your traditional nonstick style skillets, other than maybe... Some of the new ones, newer ones, uh, like Ninja has a Never Stick that I, I kind of want to try just to see what it's like. They're really expensive at the moment uh, to see how it works. But most of your traditional non-stick non skillets are only good for about four or five years, and then you got to replace them. You know, and and it, if you buy a cheaper one, you know, uh, which I don't recommend on anything. You have to replace it even sooner because the Teflon will come out. Never mind the chemical ramifications for, you know, that can happen and can cause you to be sick uh, from the Teflon coming off. You just have to replace them. Where with cast iron, you don't have to. You know, you, you just, you buy it once, you know, and that cast iron you can buy used. And a cast iron, or you can buy new, I mean, whichever. Um whatever floats your fancy, so to speak, you know, you, uh, and it lasts forever. I mean, forever, you know, it can last hundreds of years. Uh, there's cast iron out there now. I mean, I don't own any cause it's kind of pricey. That's been around for, you know, 120, 130 years. They've made cast iron skillets since the beginning of time. Um, that and Dutch ovens. So I would, uh, yeah, I mean, that's about right. So I used, uh, I used my half cup uh, scoop, and I, I'm going to get three layers out of this. Now, it, I am noticing though, if I had a had to do this again with a 13 by nine, I would probably use a little deeper pan. This is going to be a little over the sides. That's okay because I got a trick for that.
Yeah, well, it's not so much a trick, but what I would be concerned with, with this being in the oven and this being as high as it is in here, um, I would be slightly concerned with it bubbling over. So how do we fix that, right? I mean, it, like most things in life that you do, um, it's always good to have a plan A, but then you want to be able to fluctuate that maybe with a plan B. You know, so, and to know how to fix something if it's not quite right. And, and in this case, I mean, we did it right. We followed the directions to a T, which is great. We should, you know, I have said a million times, um, in, in most of my cooking videos at any rate, when you first try a recipe, try it by, by what, how the recipe goes. And then that way it gives you a chance to see what it tastes like for real. And, uh, if it's something you want to, you know, leave alone and not mess with anymore. Yeah. See, we need some more cheese. All right. Hold on one second. I want to go get some more cheese and grate it real quick. And we'll put it on top. When I come back, we'll talk about oven. Okay. So I grated up some more cheese real quick. Um, I didn't have any more Colby Jack, I guess. So I just traded up some pepper Jack. Uh, once again with cheese, uh, we, we buy block cheese and we don't buy the pre-shredded. Now, I'm not against pre-shredded, so to speak, but I know that they spray a food grade chemical on shredded cheese that you buy in the store um, that keeps it from sticking together. I mean, if you've ever shredded block cheese, you notice it gets kind of clumpy. So we don't buy pre-shredded cheese. We buy blocks and then shred it ourselves with a handy dandy box shredder. Uh, all right, so that is, uh, that's everything. That, that is how you make this as far as prep work goes. So let me get up here so I can see your smiling face. My gosh, you look good today. Um, you, you never cease to amaze me on how good you look. All right, so we got that done. Let's talk about the oven. 350 degrees, as I've mentioned a couple times before. I know you get tired of me repeating myself, but I, I want you to be successful. Um, so what we're going to do next, we're going to place this in the oven, center rack. Yeah, which almost everything gets cooked on center rack, unless you're broiling. Or some things you're baking. Uh, the directions call for fifteen to or 20 to 30 minutes in the oven. I'm going to say 20 would probably do okay. What we're looking to do, basically, is melt the cheese. Everything else is cooked. You know, and your, your flour tortilla shells, yeah, the tortilla shells, by the way, are flour, not corn. If you're going to use corn, um, fry them up real quick in a little bit of oil, thin oil, whatever oil you have available, preferably a corn oil, um, in, in, your, in a pan. I mean, literally, it's like two seconds each side. It softens them up and gives them a little more flavor. Um, and then you can use corn tortilla shells. This, this thing is so open to interpretation, it's unreal. So but the recipe calls for 20 to 30 minutes, 350 degrees. Um, and we're basically just going to melt the cheese. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven. And when I come back, we'll uh, take a look at it and have some. All right, I'll see you here in just one second. All right, guys, so we let it bake for 20 minutes in the oven. Um, I'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll talk some more. Hold on one second. Let me move you down there we are there it is at a distance i'll bring it up to you and it actually looks really good um there is our our <laughs> burrito lasagna or uh burrito pie as it was called in the recipe but like i said it's more of a lasagna because it's a layered dish so i let it cook for 20 minutes um everything got nice and golden brown on the top and looks good um i as always i, I said this in every cooking video let it rest. Um, a, even if you tried to eat it right when it came out of the oven, it would scald your mouth. Um, so don't do that. Let it rest. I let it sit here for about an additional 10 minutes um, before we click the camera back on and so I can talk to you about it. So bake for 20 minutes. Now your oven may be a little different. I mean, you know your oven. If you don't, get to know your oven because it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's expensive and you should use it. Uh, but then I let it sit here for about an additional 10 minutes after that. So let me grab a, some of the fine china. 
that we're so fond of here at our house. Uh, paper plate, recycled, 100%, and it can go in your recycling bin. Uh, I'm all about recy recycling and minimizing. Uh, I use, I don't, very rarely do I get plastic bags from the grocery store. I have bags. Um, I'm that guy. So I know most of the time when you go to the grocery store and you see people with reusable grocery bags, they're little old ladies, but I'm not little, I'm not a lady. And uh, that you know of. <laughs> uh, just kidding, maybe. Um, but it, it helps, helps save the planet. Even if you use them, Say you own a dog and you go out and walk your dog um, and you use a plastic bag every day. Well, if you're going to the grocery store every week and, you know, you buy any amount of groceries at all, they love to double bag everything, at least at my grocery store, and you end up with a plethora of bags. Um, so it helps when you, you reuse them. Plus, it takes up space having bags laying around. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to cut this. We're going to see, cut us a little piece here and. See what it looks like, how it tastes. I can tell you, it cuts real easy. Thought I was going to have to use a uh, good old fashioned butter knife, but the plastic works just as good. And the first piece is always a pain in the butt to get out. Ooh, it's still warm and tender in the middle. That's for sure. All right. The rest of this out here, and we'll take a look, see what we got. Put down the old plastic spatula there and there we are with all our fame and glory I'll give you a good spin around there um, you can see everything it looks really good now I can tell you um, based on the taco sauce I made it is a bit spicy uh, and, and again if you would like that uh, taco recipe uh, taco sauce recipe let me know um, leave me a comment and uh, I'll, I'll give it to you. But like I said, I am probably in the next week or two going to do a video just on making spices. And I'm going to throw that one in there also. Um, I really like it. You know, now, and I'll, I'll make suggestions for that. All right, so let's give this a bite here. I'm not going to do a giant piece only because it's still steaming hot. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that, but it's hot. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. It's not, it, it turned out not horribly spicy. Um, like I said, the taco sauce I have has a bite to it, but it's just got a, it's a kind of phenomenal blend. I'm not hating on it at all. Uh, it tastes like a burrito, just in casserole form. I really like it. The shell softened up nicely. Uh, some things I might add to it the next time. Uh, some fresh jalapeno. Love jalapenos. Everybody in our house loves jalapenos. And I would really like to try this with the corn tortilla shells the next time. I think that that would add a nice bite to it. You could even uh, go as far as maybe sprinkling some Doritos on top. Uh, the last maybe five, ten minutes it's baking, about halfway through. Um, and giving it a nice crunch. But other than that, I don't think I would change a whole lot. Uh, Everything blended together real nice. I was a little worried about the acidity level that would be in it. Because um, if you've got a high acidity level with the tomatoes and the sauce and, and the olives and all that, um, it, would, it can come across as having a bitter taste. And it doesn't. It, it actually balanced real well. Um, I, I think that the... Uh, Colby Jack cheese we used and the little bit of pepper jack cheese I had to sprinkle on top there towards the end added a lot to it. Um, it's it's definitely it's worth a try, um, hands down. All right, so I'm gonna take put another bite in my mouth real quick and then I want to go over the ingredients list one more time just to make sure I told you everything correctly. I know I haven't done that the last few times and I'm always worried that I'm gonna miss something. And I don't want you to miss out on anything because then you'll be like, Brian, this recipe really sucks. So I had two pounds of hamburger, 
one onion chopped. I'm gonna say a medium onion. Um, that's what I used in this. If you like more onion, add more onion, less onion, less onion. Two teaspoons of minced garlic. Uh, you can use fresh minced. You can buy a jar, keep it in your fridge. It's good for a lifetime. Uh, one can of black olives. And even if you don't like black olives, realistically, you can't really taste them a whole lot. It, it blends in so nicely. Um, it took me forever to like olives. I'm still not a huge fan of green olives, but I like black olives. Uh, one can of green chilies, a uh, small can. One small can of Rotel, which is a 10-ounce can. It's kind of their standard can, although they do make a bigger one. One 16-ounce jar of taco sauce, or make your own. Highly recommend making your own. Two cans of the refried beans. Any refried beans of your choice, or if you want to make homemade ones, you got the time, make them up. Nine ounces of shredded Colby cheese. Now, use whatever cheese you have. You know, don't rush out and just buy specifically Colby. We didn't. I got Colby Jack in there and Pepper Jack. Um, and I would go a little heavier than nine ounces. Maybe I would even dare say 16 ounces, um, which would be a pound. And 12 of the 8-inch taco shells. It's just the small soft shells um, that are made for well, tacos. But they make like five different sizes. Uh, but it's the smaller ones that you would use for a standard taco. We're going to cook the beef by itself for five minutes. Then we're going to add the onions and garlic. And we're going to saute that for about another five minutes more. Um, we want to get everything softened up. You don't want your garlic to burn. It'll put off one heck of a bitter flavor. After that, we're going to mix in our olives, our green chilies, our rotel, our taco sauce, and our beans. We're going to mix that up. And we're going to let it go for about 15 minutes or until the beans soften up. You know, so it becomes more of a, a cream, I guess, than a stiff can-shaped bean dip. Uh, after that, we're going to layer it in. We're going to start with a thing of meat. Then we're going to put our shells in. Then more meat, cheese, shells, meat, cheese, shells, meat, cheese. Um, and then, like I said, the next time around, I'm going to use corn tortillas. I'm going to throw some jalapenos in it, see how that goes. Um, and maybe sprinkle some just regular old-fashioned cheese Doritos on there. Um, and then we're going to put that in the oven at 350 degrees. And we're going to let it go for about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, in my oven, it only took 20 minutes. Um, I also have a confection oven. Uh, well, an confection option. So it circulates the air better than using a standard oven. So things cook quicker. Um, so that might be only why it take 20 minutes. That's why I'm telling you 20 to 30. After that, we're going to let it sit for 10, 15 minutes. Let all those flavors settle down. We're going to, you know, let it balance itself and cool down so you don't blister your mouth trying to eat it. Uh, things that you could pair with this, a good salad with some tomatoes and cucumber in it uh, would go real well um, with this. Uh, you could do corn as a side, or you could even put corn in this. I mean, it... The options are endless. This is such a base platform to grow your own dish on. It's unbelievable. You could add so much more to this. And we probably will um, to make it completely our own. And, you know, that's something that I know that, you know, has things in it that my family likes more. But I wanted to try this first as a recipe. Like I said, there will be things that I add to it, different things I try. Play with the recipes, you know. Cooking should be fun. You know, it should be creative. It should get the mind flowing. That's why I do this. Um, if you've watched any of my past videos, you know right now I'm struggling with remembering things. I, I even lose train of thought. I constantly feel like I'm walking into another room and forgetting something. But I go to the doctor this week um, to start the process of figuring out what all this is. Uh, well, we've already started the process, but now I get to go see different doctors and specialists. So we'll take it from there. Anyhow. I'm going to go have some supper and enjoy some time with the family and eat a really good dish. Try it. Let me know. Um, if you think it's great, let me know. If you think it stinks, you know, like, Brian, this is crap. Let me know. Um, that way, I, you know, I, I get some ideas, some feedback. You know, until that happens, I'm just going to keep making dishes that I think are going to be good. Um, or if you have an idea for something you would like me to try, let me know. You can find me on Facebook under Brian's Aquatics. You can find me here because you're watching me. Um, I'm also on Instagram under Brian's Aquatics. Speaking of which, a lot of that's going to change. 
Um, and I'll, I'll let everybody know on Facebook and Instagram too. I, I'm going to change uh, it's come June 1st ish. Uh, we're changing the name of the channel. I'm probably going to change, I may change my Facebook name also. We're going to go with Mr. Smith's Kitchen, uh, mostly because this is, I we're in my kitchen all the time. Um, not that I still won't talk about, you know, other things. Um, I mean, we're still going to bake, we're still going to cook, uh, do some canning, but, and I'm still going to do my Tuesdays um, where we talk about whatever you want to talk about, if you tell me. Um, or anything I want to talk about and I'll still throw in the gardening and the woodworking and all that stuff too but the majority of my channel is from my kitchen so it makes sense to call it Mr. Smith's Kitchen um, I don't really do a whole lot of the aquatics anymore um, I still do them but not like I was in the beginning when I had a fish room and you know a hundred species of fish and I was breeding and, and had more to talk about so, you know, we've kind of moved not completely away from that. We'll still see my fish every now and then. I'll still talk about things, but still I start, we get a house and we start breeding again and, and collecting again. Uh, that will be very limited. So, you know, until then, we're just going to stick with the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday format. And uh, Tuesdays, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about or whatever I find and always something positive within that. Uh, Wednesdays, we'll still be cooking dinner together. Thursdays, we'll still be baking something. Um, or although tomorrow, in this case, we're going to do some canning, some water bath canning, something anybody can do in their house. Uh, it doesn't require a big special pressure canner or anything like that. Um, but we're going to do some water bath canning of some strawberry lemonade. Uh, that will be amazing. A friend of mine on Facebook, who's a dear friend of me in real life, uh, Miss Kendra, asked if I would make a video for it and absolutely you know I, I will make a video for anything you guys ask me to make a video for uh, hands down so that being said this is cooled down enough now we can all eat it so we're gonna go enjoy uh, some dinner some burrito pie and uh, I will see you later I love you tell somebody else you love them it's gonna make their day a whole lot better I promise all right talk to you later bye